Well, I finished deburring the bottom skin. That's all uh, deburred and standing up against the wall here temporarily. I've taken it off again. And I've flipped the, uh, the tail cone back up the right way um, and uh, re-leveled it all. And uh, now I'm having a little look at uh, the horizontal and vertical stabilizers and uh, how they fit on and uh, if there's anything that I need to do to uh, sort that out now. And uh, I've come to the conclusion that yes, there is something I can do now because uh, the horizontal stabilizer attaches onto the tail cone with four bolts, uh, two at the front and then two at the rear. And uh, it's not totally clear when one drills these holes, but um, it's detailed, the, the installation of the tail is detailed on T01, and it goes through some uh, fairly elaborate details of how to attach the horizontal and vertical stabiliser. Um, but I think I'm going to drill the holes now, because drilling them later, when I can't strip the thing apart, um, it's going to be more difficult, I would have thought, and I can't see any reason not to. Um, it's a relatively straightforward uh, positioning um, thing. You, There's a measurement between the front edge of this channel at the rear here and uh, the back edge of the horizontal stabiliser. The vertical stabiliser is obviously fixed because it um, the holes are already fixed and it just basically lines up with the back of the um, tail cone. And if all is good, when you push it forwards, it should line up with the front fixing on the vertical stabiliser, which at the moment it doesn't because uh, I need to trim a little bit off these horizontal stabiliser skins, which it tells you in the uh, instructions to do, um, just to let it come uh, into the right place. So at the moment it's about 10 mil shy of where it should be. And I've calculated that once it comes up and butts nicely up against the... Uh, the forward mounting bracket on the vertical stabiliser that it will indeed be 81 and a half millimetres I think it is um, at the rear end uh, so all is good getting it square um, I have measured from the back corner put a tape measure on the back corner of the end of the uh, horizontal stabiliser and measured to this Clico on both sides and it's exactly the same measurement to within a millimeter so um, i'm happy with that uh level it can't not be level <laughs> because this is level it's sitting on those so it's got to be level um so what i'm going to do is go ahead and drill those holes uh, get that positioned then I can strip the tail cone down uh, deburr all the holes and then reassemble it um, and uh, should be a, a, a much better job it does tell you to do them later um, but it also says that you need to clamp the bits of metal together very tightly in order to stop any burrs building up between the different um, parts um, which I think will be very 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 difficult so I'm going to do it now and uh, I'm in the lucky position that I, I built the uh, horizontal stabilizer and vertical stabilizer well in advance and uh, I can do those things now whereas if you were building the, t the tail cone first and then the, those parts you'd uh, obviously have to do it later
anyway that's what i'm up to at the moment so i'm going to strip that lot off now and um i've marked underneath uh where i need to take off uh part the little slither of skin just to let the thing uh, the whole horizontal stabilizer slide forward slightly um it tells you that there should be between half a millimeter and one and a half millimeters of gap between the uh the tail cone and the horizontal stabilizer skin so i'm going for about a millimeter um as a halfway point and uh, uh i'll busy away and do that and i'll let you know how it goes more later what a tricky job that was it took two and a half hours to uh, trim the horizontal stabiliser skins um, to the point where I could move it forwards into position and it be square with the aircraft as well um, using a file. The file was the only way to do it really. Um, taking a little bit off at a time, trying it, taking a bit more off, trying it and at one point i got a little bit annoyed uh, with myself because i actually dropped the horizontal stabilizer on the floor and put a tiny little dent in the corner over here which i'm going to see forever now anyway it's done and uh, the horizontal stabilizer is in position and clamped to the front of the uh, vertical stabilizer mounting. Um, it's square, I've measured it from corner to the front clico on both sides and it's within one millimeter um, of square so I'm happy with that and so two and a half hours of uh, hard work and a bit of frustration but uh, it's done uh, next thing is uh, I'm going to locate the holes and drill them for the mountings then after that it's time to drill out and copper clico the uh, holes in all the cross members um, before stripping it down and deburring it slow progress this morning it's taken uh, the best part of two and three quarter hours to locate the correct position for everything and drill the seven holes for the bolts that hold on the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer there are four bolts two at the front and two at the rear which you may just be able to see, see down there that hold the horizontal stabilizer down to the tail cone and then there are three bolts which hold the front mounting bracket uh, from the vertical stabilizer onto the horizontal stabilizer um, and just getting everything straight level fitted together convincing yourself that you've definitely got it right before you drill the holes is quite difficult but anyway two and three quarter hours later here we are it's done i can take it all to bits now so three more hours spent over the last uh, well yesterday afternoon and this morning um has seen everything up drilled and copper clecoed that can be up drilled and copper clecoed at the moment um so uh i've done the up drilled the seat belt restraints i've uh, up drilled and copper clecoed where appropriate the cross members the upper and lower cross members and uh, also fitted the two 
push rod support assemblies one back there and one here and uh, I think that's it now um, I think it's time to take it all to pieces and deburr everything and uh, the time so far on the towel cone to this point is about 36 hours uh, I would imagine by the time we've deburred and riveted we'll probably be up to the 40 hour mark but we'll see but uh, it's looking very nice and everything's lining up and uh, square level straight um, pretty happy with it all anyway more later four and a half hours of deburring later and the entire thing is stripped down to its constituent parts everything's been deburred that can be deburred and uh, there are the two sides all deburred as much as I can and uh, also the cross tie box is standing there again deburred up drilled everything's been up drilled and deburred as far as it can go and the next uh, task is to reassemble it and then start to look at what are the next things to do I think probably the um, flap actuator is probably going to be my next uh, thing that I do because um, I need to do that before fixing anything at the uh, the front end of the tail cone I've got to be able to take it apart to be able to get everything in and out and uh, line all the holes up deburr it and everything like that so I'm going to go ahead I think and do that next and then probably uh, the turtle deck um, after that. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, another four and a half hours of um, mind-numbingly boring deburring. Um, and uh, it's ready for reassembly. And there we have it. The tail cone reassembled and clicoed together now I was intending to actually uh, start to rivet some of this together but I've changed my mind because I want to have a look at the flap actuator at the front end and that involves taking the front to pieces and uh, I've got it kind of temporarily popped in there so there's some little plastic blocks little plastic bearings um, bearing blocks so I've got the right hand one sitting on its mounting bracket and that's the one that actually sets the uh, left and uh, or the registration of the uh, of the entire assembly left and right because it runs in a little groove I don't know whether you can see it there in the uh, flat actuator bar um, so that sets the left and right and then the one at the other end is there for support only the bottom of the uh, of the bearing blocks um, are there at the moment because I've noticed that I need to cut a piece of the lower cross member out because otherwise I'm not going to be able to get the top block on so I've got that to do so I'm going to strip the front out and uh, the actuator itself is sitting in position um, I've just got a couple of uh, temporary bolts holding it in place and so I'm going to have a look at that first and do that next. But basically, the tail cone 
is complete bar doing some uh, riveting and uh, quite pleased with it looks good um, everything seems to be square straight level and uh, it's taken about 40 hours in total um, but it's uh, been interesting and uh, quite challenging in places particularly around the uh, the aft end very tight in there and uh, but very rewarding because I've got something that actually looks like a piece of aircraft now so uh, that's completed F21 uh, apart from the riveting so I'll leave it at that for the tail cone and we'll progress on to uh, fitting the flap actuator <laughs> 